And almost live from room 115, it's Miss Sunogo! To our third episode. Our weekly read aloud is called The Monster Who Ate My Keys, written by Danny Schnitzlein and illustrated by Matt Faulkner. Eat your peas, said my mom, or you won't get dessert. I said, before peas, I would rather eat dirt. I know you don't want to, she said with a glare, but until they get eaten, you'll stay in your chair. I begged and I whined. I got down on my knees. Please, mommy, don't make me eat all these peas. I stomped and I grumbled. I yelled and I pled. Why can't I eat corn or potatoes instead? Eat up those peas, do it now, my mom said, or you'll get no ice cream and you'll go straight to bed. My mom left the kitchen. I poked at those peas. Their sickening smell made me weak in the knees. Quickly, I offered the peas to my pup, but Ralph barely sniffed them, then turned his nose up. I closed my eyes tightly and whispered a wish. Please let these peas disappear from my dish. And something quite strange and mysterious occurred, almost as if somebody somewhere had heard. For right out of nowhere, a monster appeared. His hair looked like spinach and so did his beard. His big bloated body was broccoli green and his breath, when he sneered, reeked of rotten sardines. Each eyeball resembled a big Brussels sprout. His long bumpy squash nose was sticking straight out. Large liver-like lips peeled back to reveal sharp teeth like a shark's and a tongue like an eel. Long octopus tentacles writhed from his torso Quite gruesome already, those arms made him more so. His ears were like mushrooms, his chin like a beet, and he balanced himself on two big stinky feet. Just how he got in, I hadn't a clue. My heart skipped a beat as I asked, who are you? He growled, I'm the monster who helps kids like you. I eat up their eggplant, I eat turnips too. I gobble down foods that make small stomachs quiver, like lima beans, collard greens, spinach, and liver. I came in reply to your pitiful plea, and I'm ready and willing to eat every pea. I'll eat up the big ones, I'll eat up the small, but then you must give me your new soccer ball. I thought of my soccer ball under my bed. I once bounced it 23 times on my head. But then when I looked at the peas on my plate, my brain filled with dread and disgust and with hate. What is your answer? The monster demanded. I don't have much time, so I'll be very candid. Millions of kids want their yucky foods eaten, from Bali to Raleigh, from Chile to Sweden. Okay, I said finally, I'll give you my ball. Eat up my peas, eat them up, one and all. He laughed a cold laugh as he picked up each pea and swallowed them down individually. All 64 peas, slimy, gruesome, and green, he ate every one and he licked the plate clean. And after he'd licked and he'd laughed and he'd slurp, he set down my plate and he boorishly burped. Then just as my mother came back in the room, he vanished, no trace, with a noise that went foom. 
Mom looked at my plate and she shouted with glee, you did it, you ate each and every pea. She gave me a hug and my ice cream, so yummy, with chocolate on top, so good in my tummy. Then I went on upstairs and peered under my bed. I started to sweat, my heart filled with dread. For there in the spot where my ball used to be, there was only one very small, squishy green pea. And now when I want to play soccer with dad, I think of that ball and I get very sad. If I've said it one time, then I've said it 10, I won't make a trade with a monster again. Not long after that, we had peas with our meal. The monster appeared with the same kind of deal. I'll eat up your peas just as quick as you like, but then in return, you must give me your bike. I thought of my bicycle shiny and knew I'd spent my whole savings to buy it. That's true. But when I looked down at those gloppy green peas, I felt like you feel when you get a disease. Okay, I said sadly, I'll give you my bike. Just eat up these peas, get them out of my sight. The monster then opened his mouth very wide. He took all my peas and he dumped them inside. He chewed and he chomped and he swallowed them down. Then, boom, he was gone, off for some other town. My mom served me cake, but I just couldn't eat it. I walked to the door, feeling down and defeated. I twisted the knob and I shuffled outside to get on my bike and go out for a ride. I looked all around and I started to cry. My bike wasn't out there. I think you know why. And right in the space where my bike used to be, there was only one very small, mushy green pea. Now when my friends take their bikes for a ride, they never ask me, so I stay home inside. If I've said it one time, then I've said it 10. I won't make a trade with the monster again. A week after that, there were peas in the stew. The monster showed up like he always would do. The words that he said made my whole body freeze. Give me your puppy and I'll eat your peas. I looked down at Ralph, he gazed up at me. I looked at my plate at each ghastly green pea. Come on, growled the monster, I'm already late. Just give me your dog and I'll finish your plate. I looked at those peas and I just about gagged. I looked back at Ralph, his scruffy tail wagged. My pup put his cold little nose on my knee. I reached for my fork and I speared a small pea. I opened my mouth and I squinched up my eyes. The pea touched my tongue and I got a surprise. That pea didn't taste like I thought that it would. I had to admit it, that pea tasted good. I picked up another and chewed it and swallowed. Each pea tasted better than those it had followed. I ate every pea till there wasn't a trace and Ralph thanked me kindly by licking my face. I turned to the monster, that grumpy old guy, to say, I don't need you and told him goodbye. But right in the spot where the monster had stood was only a pea and it tasted quite good. And now there's not one single food I won't try. If others can eat it, well then, so can I. I'm happier now than I ever have been, and I never will trade with a monster again. Okay, we only have two, but they're super awesome experiments to do. 
And get this, I want you to get excited for these totally extra crazy experiments. If you haven't guessed by now, yes, these experiments involve using eggs. And now for a magic trick. What if I had two eggs and told you that I could make one sink and the other float in water? Pretty magical, right? Let's see how this is possible. You will need two glass containers so that you can see through to the magic going on inside. You will also need salt, measuring spoons, and some good old H2O. Oh, and silly me, you will obviously need eggs. Pour water into the first container, almost to the top. Next, pour water into the second container, but stop halfway. This is where we add about four tablespoons of salt, I mean magical powder, into the container. Mix it up really well with a spoon that can reach the bottom. Then, fill up the rest of the container with more water, again, stopping when you get close to the top. Using the spoon, Gently place the egg into the first container. What do you observe happening? That's right, folks. When you place an egg in a container filled with just water, it sinks. But I bet you already knew that, right? So not much of a magic trick. But now watch this. Pick up your spoon again and use it to gently place your second egg into the container filled with the salt water solution. And what? It sank? Well, I quickly racked my brain and realized four tablespoons of salt wasn't enough. The glass containers that I used were almost twice the size of a regular glass cup, so I decided to double the salt recipe and threw in eight tablespoons. And, ta-da, the egg floats. Thank you, thank you, I'll be here all night. Well, how did I achieve such a magical feat? Remember that thing we talked about in our first episode called density? And that density tells us how much matter is packed into a substance? Well, a raw egg is denser than water. That means the particles of matter are packed more tightly within the egg than the particles of matter within the water surrounding it. And voila, the egg sinks to the bottom. When you add salt to the water, like we did in the second container, you are actually increasing the density of the water by packing in salt into the same area or volume of water. When enough salt is added to the water, the salt water solution's density becomes greater than the eggs, so the egg will then float to the top. Now it's your turn to try this experiment at home. What happens if you make a sugar water solution? What if the eggs are hard boiled instead of raw? What if you use warm water or hot water instead of cold or room temperature water? Let us know. What if I told you that I could get an egg to drop into a glass container filled with water? Easy peasy. Well, not so fast. What if I also told you that the egg is perched on top of a cardboard tube that is balanced on a shallow container that sits on top of the glass container filled with water? Phew, let's try this together. You will need a glass container filled three quarters of the way with water. Place a shallow pie dish or any other shallow container on top of the glass container. Next, take a cardboard tube and place it on top of the shallow container. You can use the tube found inside a roll of toilet paper. Ask your parents where they are hiding those. Or the inside of a, of a paper towel roll. Just make sure to cut it down to size if you do. And to top off this crazy balancing act, add an egg on top. Or if you're like me and want to test it out first because you just want to be sure, use a prop like a small ball or squishy to see if it will work. 
I used a ping pong ball. Stand directly behind your setup. Place your hand about six inches away from the pie dish and quickly, but firmly and with control, smack the pie dish out of the way. You want to hit the edge of the pie dish with enough force to knock the cardboard tube out from under the egg. Gravity will do the rest as the egg falls directly into the glass of water. Aha! It worked! Now, time to repeat the experiment, this time using an actual egg. I added food coloring for visual effect and to feel fancy. Think back to last week's episode when we discussed that, without force, an object will either remain still or keep moving in the same direction. The egg is not moving while it sits on top of the tube. By smacking the edge of the pie dish, we apply enough force to cause it to knock out from under the cardboard tube. The edge of the pie pan was high enough to catch the bottom of the cardboard tube as it flung over to the side. We basically knocked the support out from under the egg. From there, the force of gravity took over and pulled the egg straight down toward the center of the earth, in this case, straight down into the water, interrupting the egg's fall and preventing it from breaking. Now, it's your turn. What happens if we use different sizes of cardboard tubes? Can you do this with three eggs, with four? Try it at home and share your videos with us. So these are my creations, only making, only with these four colors. This was red and blue, this was blue and green, this one was red and green, this one was um, yellow and red. So here is I will show you how I do this. Well, in a cool way. So I think we should do the purple because I think it's the best. So take off the caps, make sure they're like this, don't squeeze any out. both on the edge, tip them a bit, squeeze them a little bit until there's only one drop. Watch it because of course it looks beautiful. And if you want to, the time to go faster, just use a spoon, but this time I'll just shake it. And over the top looks also really cool. So now I will shake it. As you see, it's starting to look like the, it's starting to get darker and a bit of purple is appearing. So it gets lighter when you shake it and darker when you don't. That's how you do it. Hello everyone. Perfect. Today I'm going to tell you about our stove. The stoop on the front of your house, right? Yep. So that's the stoop. So the so this is Daddy is showing you the stoop. It's lime. It's made of limestone. It's and as you know, limestone is a sedimentary rock. And you know, we all know how sedimentary rock forms by sediments. The sediment clumps together at the bottom of the ocean to form this. And what is it that we're looking at? The shells on the sedimentary rock. Okay. Where was Which it? One? Oh, right here. These are, so this one I really like because it's one of them that shows out. It shows out really good. You can point at it. It shows out really good. Now the okay. other one I want to show is this. It's another one that shows out, and it still has color. Can you believe it? Now I'm gonna show you this one. This one is a whole shell. It's, it's, it lets you see the inside of the lime. Here, I'll see if I can get close. Right here. Now I'm gonna show you this. It looks like a wishbone, right? We don't know if it actually is a wishbone. We don't know if it's actually a bone. Now I'm going to show you it's like a regular shell, but it makes it, but it forms a hole. Really cool, right? What are you going to show us? Pollution. The pollution. 
evolution. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Can you see any shells here? Nope, here. But this one is, that one is one that's still showing out. And this one is another one that has color. Really cool, right? And why did why is there pollution on the limestone? Because this house is very old. It's been in the city for a really long time. Okay. So you see all this dark color? That is the pollution. This doesn't have as much dark color. It does it has more shells. Check it out. Yeah, so those are all the shells. And where were all of these shells a long, long time ago? At the bottom of the ocean. Oh, there's a wishbone. Wait, right, oh. Oh, yeah. It looks like a Y. <laughs> now let's see this one. Check right. this one out. It looks like two eyes. If there was a smile there, it would be a smiley face. <laughs> so, look. So this, they both have stuff inside. They may even be connected. I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> okay, that's great. Okay. Bye bye. Do you have a science experiment idea that you want featured on our show? Send me an email including any videos or pictures of your experiment. Remember, Ask an adult for permission first and for help. Last week's post-it question was, if you could invent something to make life better for others, what would it be? Here's what you had to say. about my invention today. I am inventing a hover car. As you can see, I, can, I have blueprints and it's a little confusing to drive because, uh, you know, you need magnetic rocks. So the floor either has to, if we don't have an, no, enough north magnetic rock for the floor, then we'll switch to south magnetic rock. So, this is going to be a car that I invented. It's magnetic, so it'll float. You'll be able to turn off your headlights if you're not moving in the same direction as other people. But if you're, um, but if you're at the head of the line, that means your car will have to be really power powerful. So they'll pull the rest of the cars with the magnetic field. And that way you can get around with not cars just zooming at different speeds. This will help people by, by keeping them safe. Like right. And then for the cars, they won't use... They won't use uh, gas. Right. They will not use pollution. And the world will be a much happier place. Thanks. So I'm done. Hi. Thank you for all of your responses. What great inventions. Let's take a look now at this week's post-it question of the week.
If you could eat only one type of food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Do you have an answer to this week's post-it question? Email your responses to me. Make sure to ask an adult for help. My email address is msonogo at cps.edu. Oh, hey, Talkie. There you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. Oh, hey, what's up? What are you doing? Well, I'm really getting tired of not being able to go outside and it's driving me crazy. So I made my own little beach, like my shells, like my blue water. Well, Talkie, this is really creative of you. And you know what? I actually have some workout exercises that can make it seem like you're almost at a beach. Really? What a splash-tastic idea! Get it? Get it? Splash? Water? Ha ha ha! To do starfish jumps, spread your arms and legs wide as you jump into the air. Make an X or a starfish shape with your body. How many can you do in 30 seconds? To do crab walks, sit and place your palms flat on the floor behind you. Lift your hips up off the ground and keep them high as you crawl forward. For a bonus challenge, can you try crab walking backwards? exercises for Mr. Nogo's uh, video and I've got two exercises here today that are very uh, they're more of stretches but I don't know so one is called the pigeon uh, you put what you can start off in a gazelle and then you put one leg behind and start to like turn it turn it and then you if you're really flexible put um, try to lay down on it and maybe even if you're really, really flexible, go into the splits. And my second exercise, it's kind of like a, I don't know, kind of like a marching strategy. So go. Do you have a favorite exercise or workout activity that you want featured on our show? Have an adult help you film your workout. Email your videos to msonogo at cps.edu. Taki and I can't wait to sweat it out with you.
shiitake. Ooh, what do you have here? Oh, hey, Miss Sunogo. Um, well, my siblings and I, we went on a treasure hunt in our backyard. Yeah, we started digging up our backyard, but we had to ask our parents for permission first. It's not like we just started digging like crazy wild animals. <laughs> Get it, wild animals? We're running into a bit of a problem. What kind of problem, Taki? Well, you see, ooh, I really like this one. No, don't touch it. That's adding to our problem. Oh, goodness. What's the problem? The problem is we found 22 precious gemstones in our backyard, but there are three of us. How on earth am I supposed to make sure we each get the same amount of gems equally? Yeah, especially when I want this one and this one and this one, and I want this one, this one, and this one. Hold it, guys. We need to ask the mathematicians for help. <coughs> for the third time in a row, I am asking you mathematicians, help us. How can we make sure that we each get the same amount of gemstones for it to be fair? And also, will there be any left over? Last week, Taki needed our help to solve a baking math problem. Let's take a look at some of the strategies and solutions sent in by our mathematicians. How I solve Miss Nogo's math problem. Now, what are these two for? Now, Taki doesn't know how much he started with, which was actually 87. Now, he gave away 62, and he ended up with 25. So, you had to figure out how much he had. So, I decided to do this. Now, Let's see if I am correct. Now, we're going to count the ones to check if this is the right answer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is correct. Now let's count this. Seven. Eight, so that is correct. Now what does this equal together? Eighty, seven, because that is the tens and that is the ones. Okay, it's ready, it's going. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the answer to the math question. So, the, I did the easiest way to do it, which is, a, a place value. So, if, so I've started off with 62. Here are the six tens and two ones. Here are the two ones. Now, to get the answer, you need to add on six, you need to add on 25. So I'm going to do plus two tens and then plus five ones. One. So, let's see what answer is. So I know this is six, seven, eight. So I'm gonna write eight here. And two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the answer is 87. Now I'm gonna show you how to check your answer. So here you go. I'm going to draw 87. You 
you have to take away 25. So, cross out two tens, one, two, then cross out five ones. One, two, three, four, five. And I get 62. That's how you check your answer. Do you have a solution to our math problem of the week? Email me your response. For a bonus challenge, is there more than one way to solve the problem? I can't wait to hear from you. It's time for Talkie the Talking Triceratops. Wait, that's too long. Triple T time. No thanks, I want almonds. Knock knock. Who's there? Handsome. Handsome who? Handsome mustard to me, please. <laughs> knock knock. Who's there? Giraffe. Giraffe who? Giraffe anything for me to eat? I'm hungry. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for watching. Love, Miss Amiga.